This is an example demonstrating the quantifier exchange rule. We call it asleep in class. The story is this. Alice is in class. If Tom is asleep, then it is not true that Alice is in class and Bob did his homework. If anyone is in class, then everyone did the homework. Thus, it isn't true that everyone is asleep. Let's begin by defining A, B, and T to represent Alice, Bob, and Tom, respectively. C of X to represent X is in class. H of X to represent X did his or her homework. And S of X to represent X is asleep. From the story and these definitions, we may represent the three premises as C of A, that is, Alice is in class. S of T implies the negation of C of A and H of B, that is, if Tom is asleep, then it is not true that Alice is in class and Bob did his homework. And there exists a y such that c of y implies for all x h of x. That is, if anyone is in class, then everyone did the homework. The conclusion we seek is the negation of for all z s of z. That is, it isn't true that everyone is asleep. Once again, symbolically, the premises are c of a S of T implies the negation of C of A and H of B, and there exists a Y such that C of Y implies for all X, H of X. The conclusion is the negation of for all Z, S of Z. So how would we construct a proof of this? Let's begin by looking at the conclusion. The conclusion says the negation of for all Z, S of Z. To simplify our consideration of a proof, let's begin by ignoring all of the quantifications. The conclusion asks us to show S is false, and the second premise would give us S is false if we were able to show C of A and H of B were true. So how could we show C of A and H of B are true? Well, C of A is true from the first premise. and H is the consequence of the implication in the third premise, so it appears that the strategy should be using C of A to gain H and then forming a conjunction of C of A and H to obtain not S of T. Now let's consider quantifications. We look at the third premise and see the antecedent of the implication is there exists a y such that c of y. That's useful because we do have c of a in the first premise, so it looks like we could use that to obtain the consequence of the implication for all x h of x. Since we know we need h of b to be employed with the second premise, we should universally instantiate that h of x to have x being b. Then we would have c of a and h of b and modus tollens applied to the second premise would result in not s of t. The conclusion just asks that s is not true always. Since s of t is false, it looks like we would have the conclusion. We just don't have it quite in the right form. However, quantifier exchange applied to the conclusion would say there exists a z such that s of z is false. We do know that s of t is false, so we would be able to gain our conclusion. If you would like to complete this proof on your own, Please pause this video now. On line one, we place our first premise, C of A. And let's place premise three on line two. There exists a Y such that C of Y implies for all X, H of X. The antecedent of the implication in line two is there exists a Y such that C of Y. To obtain that, 
we existentially generalize line 1 to say there exists a y such that c of y on line 3. Now we can use modus ponens on line 4 to get for all x h of x. Then the x in line 4 can be universally instantiated to b to produce h of b on line 5. Conjunction applied to lines 1 and 5 results in c of a and h of b on line 6. Now we introduce the second premise, s of t implies the negation of c of a and h of b on line 7. Modus tollens applied to lines 6 and 7 results in not s of t on line 8. An existential generalization of line 8 produces line 9. There exists a z such that not s of z. Finally, a quantifier exchange applied to line 9 results in line 10, the negation of for all z s of z. That is the conclusion we sought and the proof is complete.